So I'm going to tell you the rest of the story of, of our adventure in Ireland and Tiernan Oak and how magical it was. So I said in the last episode that this is part two, so this is part two of the part three. So technically this is part four of our story. The first video I talk about High Brazil and TJ Westrup, the folklorist and archaeologist and antiquarian. In the second episode I talk about uh, Tiernan Oak, the ancient Irish uh, the, the ancient Celtic Irish legend. In episode three, I told the first part of our story when me and my friend went out to uh, Inishmore and uh, met Parig Waters and his wife Carmel Waters, and, and they had discussed Tirnanog with us and this phenomenon. And now I'm going to tell you what Carmel said after she told us I saw Tirnanog once. And uh, again, this moment when she said that, it kind of just broke through. We could just feel the magic kind of filling the room, the, the magic of story and adventure. And she told us, I used to drive a bus, a tourist bus, back in, in probably 30 years ago is what she told us. And, and I'm sorry, I can't help doing the accent when I tell these stories because it just sounds the best. And if that bothers you, I know it's not the best accent um, and I could use a lot of practice, but it kind of sets the, the scene, you know? She told us, I used to drive this tour bus when tourists would come into Dunangus, which I, I don't think I explained this in another video, but Dunangus is a hill fort, an ancient, ancient hill fort over 3,000 years old that uh, was built so long ago that the cliff has actually eroded and half of it has fallen into the sea. So this is like a, a very, very ancient, very huge, prominent hill fort. And, and these were probably built a lot by the, the pre-Celtic peoples that lived in Ireland. Kind of the same era of the people that built Stonehenge. And these were some of the first agriculturalists that came through Europe that have kind of their origin 10,000 years ago in the Taurus Mountains in, in, in Anatolia. This, this was built so, so long ago and it, it's just this kind of concentration of archaeology and magic and this is the place that T.J. Westrup apparently had his sightings and it was the place from the old timey photo that we saw that we were searching for. But anyway, she told us, Carmel told us that she um, would drive tourists out to Dunangus. And she said that one day at the top of a certain hill, right after you pass a church, so she knew the exact spot, she said, we came over that hill and you could see out right there in the ocean, not quite on the horizon, but a little bit closer, an island out in the ocean. And now, there's no island out there at all. There's actually nothing out there until you reach America in the Atlantic Ocean or Iceland or Greenland or, or Nova Scotia. You know, there's nothing in the ocean between Ireland and those lands. There, there maybe used to be islands when the sea levels were a lot lower 11,600 years ago, but uh, there's certainly not an island there and, and wasn't one 30 years ago when Carmel used to drive this tour bus, but she told us, I saw an island and uh, it, it was maybe some sort of optical illusion. But I remember I said, oh, that's Tiernan Oak, because I had heard the stories. And I had heard people talking about that every once in a while on a certain morning, right about when it was getting to be noon, and the light was just right, and the sun was just right, you could see an island out there. And we all got out, and all the tourists got out, and some of them took pictures of this. And she's like, and I remember seeing it, and it was an island that was covered with buildings of some sort. I saw rooftops. I saw steeples of churches. I saw chimneys with smoke coming out of them. And this was just incredible. Like this was a first-hand account of this older woman telling us this, you know. She, she had seen this with her own eyes when she was young, a little bit younger, and she used to drive the tour bus and these, these tourists had seen it as well. And she told us, I don't know where it came from, but I, but I saw Tiernanog and we were just losing our mind. It, it took everything inside of us to just sit there and be like, oh yeah, wow, interesting, you know, writing it down. I actually have, um, voice recordings of, of these things that I might release it someday that I, I just gathered those because the story was so incredible and I asked their permission that I could record that and they were totally fine with it and it was this amazing moment where she just painted this image of seeing whatever this thing was we asked her when she said oh it was back must have been 1990 something you know the, the earlier mid 90s is when this happened when she used to drive this tour bus but she didn't remember exactly the day or month or even time of year she just remembers it was one of those days and, and they saw that island out there from that specific vantage point. And then interestingly enough, as she was saying that, it was like this sort of veil lifted and Parig said himself, Parig, the man who sat there for 10 minutes telling us, oh, I've heard of it, it's all nonsense, it's an optical illusion, I'm sure. He sat there and he goes, oh, you know, I forgot, but I also saw the same thing once. And we're just like, what is going on? 
what is happening right now? He's like, yes, I, I, I forgot about it, but I was driving that same road and it was in that same spot at the same time of day. I was driving up the road in my old car, it was an old car at the time and blew lots of smoke, but I, I got up right there to the top of the hill and I looked out and I, I saw it too. Not quite on the horizon and I saw rooftops and I saw steeples of churches. I saw the same thing. And we were just like, oh my gosh, like what is ha what magical thing is happening right now that like the these people had seen this phenomenon and he had just totally forgot about it, which which I find has happened as I've talked to people, they've had experiences they can't explain. And for some reason or another, their brain kind of seems to start to correct for that and to kind of glaze over or push out the, the things that don't make sense or diminish them. Like I've met so many people that upon remembering, they're like, oh yeah, as a child, I did see something weird and I, I have no idea what it was. And anyway, maybe I'll make a, a video about that specific magic glamour or mist or whatever, you know, a thing, mechanism in our brain that does that when we see something that's too strange to comprehend. But this was this enormously just magical moment for us to hear this story from these people that they had seen this phenomenon. And of course, Park said, and, I, and of course, it's something, it's an optical illusion. You're seeing through, for some reason, a mirage of something far away. And, uh, you know, up to this point, we had thought, well, maybe this is some sort of, you know, trick of the light that is projecting this island out there, a piece of the island out there. But then we, you know, asked them, we're like, well, does it look like somewhere like part of the town on this island? They said, oh, there's nothing like that on the island. It was too densely populated with the roofs and the houses and the steeples. There's nothing like that on the island. And we realized like, yeah, on that island of Inishmoor, and the surrounding Aran Islands, there's not a single place where it's that dense. You know, there are scattered houses and a small town, but it's never that big of a collection of buildings. So if it was some sort of optical illusion, it was coming from somewhere miles and miles and miles away. We're talking, you know, miles from anywhere else in Ireland. Here, here they were seeing the rooftops and the church steeples of some place, you know, somewhere. And uh, they told us, like, I don't remember seeing any trees or, or land, just the rooftops is what I remember seeing, the rooftops of wherever this place was, you know, not quite on the horizon, but out there, out there in, in, in the ocean, you know. And so we're like freaking out at this point. We're like, we have first two first-hand accounts of this thing happening. And so, you know, we, we did our due diligence. We went up to the spot. I actually have to make a correction now that I'm remembering. It was not noon. It was not noon that they saw this. Uh, I don't know why I thought that was the case. I think maybe we were there at noon um, or something like that, but noon was not where they, they saw this. Um, and sorry, I, I totally just misremembered that, but it was actually at sunset, I think, that they saw this thing. It was right as, as the sun was kind of setting. That was the, the setup that usually led them to, to see it. And that actually checks out with some of the other settings like TJ Westrup and everything. And I apologize, I should have went back to my notes before I said noon. Um, it was at sunset that uh, this, this uh, from mythology, this golden road opens up um, and, and these sightings are said to have happened. So anyway, we, we wanted to be at Dun Angus by sunset. So we were riding our bikes across the whole island. We stopped at the top of the hill. Obviously, we didn't see anything out there. We kept going all the way to this ancient hill fort, which is so spectacularly impressive. It's like this super, super, super impressive hill fort. And uh, like, like seeing just the walls that were so, so thick and tall that these human thousands and thousands of years ago made, and to see that the erosion has caused half of it to fall in the sea, unless it was built that way. Also, well, for those of you that are a bit, a little bit scared of heights, uh, oh baby. And it was just like this ancient, ancient, mysterious place. And I remember looking out across the ocean and seeing the sun set and seeing that golden road open up towards the west was just one of the most special experiences of my life. And we were able to find that place exactly where TJ Westrup took the picture of the woman trying to take a picture. And we stood at that place. We stood at that place and we looked out over the ocean, hundreds of feet above it on those cliffs. And that day we didn't see an, a phantom island, but we saw that golden road leading to another world, leading to somewhere else. And, and kind of had this moment where we shared in multiple levels of history and belief and folklore and mythology, you know, I have quite a bit of Irish blood through my mother's side. It was a place I always wanted to visit. You know, I, I have a connection to there. I feel a connection to there, that, that my people came from there. And I feel like that's such an inborn human 
experience to connect with your ancestors and connect with who they were as people and realize that they were people and that everything that they did, you know, kind of paved a way for you to just exist and be alive and standing there, looking out over that ocean, the ocean that my ancestors had looked out over for thousands and thousands of years, you know, on the search for this lost thing, this island that we wanted to see, this incredible, unobtainable, impossible thing that these people had told us about, this story that they had given us. It was one of, if not the best travel moment of my life. And I remember as I was cycling home, as it was getting dark, I realized I did it. The number one place I always wanted to visit, I went there. I saw it. The one place on this planet that I wanted to see, I did it. I saw it. And the feeling of accomplishment, the beautiful feeling of adventure that filled me was amazing. And all I wanted to do was tell everybody I knew, hey, there's a place out there, the number one place that you always wanted to go. You just have to go. And it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be uncomfortable. Nobody likes sleeping in the airport, nobody likes spending the money, the, you know, nobody likes eating the airport food, and there's, there's so many uncomfortable parts of it, and the sacrifices you usually have to make to, to get there is, is difficult, and it's hard. But it was so, so worth it. Nothing else I could have bought would have been as valuable to me as that experience standing right there. And I remember, after we accomplished that, after we went to the place we always wanted to go, hearing the stories that we always wanted to hear, and looking out, getting that view, the rest of the world opened up to me. And I said, I could go anywhere now. I saw it, I saw the thing I wanted and everything else, everywhere else I wanna go now. The list just started populating with all these places because I had gone to that one, I had finally done the thing I wanted to do. And the rest of the world just opened up for adventure forever after. I hope you liked that story today. I, I might, you know, eventually redo some of these stories as I get a little bit better at this whole process and I kind of learn how you guys want to receive these videos. I like the kind of conversational unscripted aspect of them, but I can change that if you guys are feeling like that's something you want. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. And that's like a magical, adventurous, uh, you know, pretty even, I, dare I say, sacred experience for me. And I cannot tell you enough that there's magic in the world and if you go out, you'll find it. I'm Levi, and this is Outlandish. Mm -hmm.